Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Beings, we are getting so close to the time that the Lord will be returning. I thought we should once again read the book of 1st Esdras and 2nd Esdras. So, we are in the complete apocrypha in the book of 1st Esdras. Josiah held the Passover in Jerusalem to his Lord and offered the Passover the fourteenth day of the first month, having set the priests according to their daily courses, being arrayed in their vestments in the temple of the Lord. And he spoke to the Levites, the temple servants of, Jer of Israel, that they should make, to them, make themselves holy to the Lord, to set the holy ark of the Lord in the house of King Solomon, the son of David, had built, and said, you will no more have, have need to bear it upon your shoulders. Now, therefore, serve the Lord your God and minister to his people Israel and prepare you after your father's houses and kindred, according to the writing of David, king of Israel, and according to the magnificence of Solomon, his son, and standing in the holy place according to several divisions of the families of you, the Levites, who minister in the presence of your kindred, the children of Israel. Offer the Passover in order, and make ready the sacrifices for your kindred, and keep the Passover according to the commandment of the Lord, which was given to Moses. And to the people which were present, Josiah gave thirty thousand lambs and kids, and three thousand calves. These things were given to the kings of the king's substance, according as he had promised. And, the, and to the people, and to the priests, and Levites. And Helchias, and Zacharias, and, and Esaias, the rulers of the temple, gave to the priest for the Passover two thousand and six hundred sheep, and three hundred calves. And Jeconias, and Samias, and Nathaniel, his brother, and Sabias, and Ochiolus, and Joram, captains over thousands, gave to the Levites for the Passover five thousand sheep and seven hundred calves. And when these things were done, the priests and Levites, having their unleavened bread, stood in comely order according to the kindred, and according to the several divisions by fathers' houses, before the people, to offer to the Lord. As it is written in the book of Moses, and so did they in the morning. And they roasted the Passover with fire, as appertains, and the sacrifices they sought in the brazen vessels and cauldrons with a good savor. And they set them all before the, excuse me, and they set before all the people. And afterward they prepared for themselves and for the peace, priest their kindreds, the sons of Aaron. For the priest offered the fat until night, and the Levites prepared for themselves and for the priests their kindred the sons of Aaron. The holy singers also, the sons of Asaph, were in, or, in their order, according to the appointment of David, to wit, Asaph, Zacharias, and Edenius, Edenus, who was the king's retinue. Moreover, the gatekeepers were at every gate. None had need to depart from his daily course, for their kindred, the Levites, prepared for them. So were the things that belonged to the sacrifices of the Lord accomplished in that day in holding the Passover and offering sacrifices upon the altar of the Lord according to the commandments of King Josiah. So the children of Israel, which were present at that time, held the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. And such a Passover was not held in Israel since the time of the prophet Samuel. Yes, all the kings of Israel held not such a Passover as Josiah, and the priests, and the Levites, and the Jews, held all Jeru excuse me, held with all Israel that were present in their dwelling place at Jerusalem. In the eighteenth year of the reign of Josiah was this Passover held, and the works of Josiah were upright before his Lord, with a heart full of good godliness. Moreover, excuse me. Moreover, the things that came to pass in his days have been written in times past, 
concerning those that sinned and did wickedly against the Lord above every people and kingdom, and how they grieved him exceedingly, so that the words of the Lord were confirmed against Israel. Now after all these acts of Josiah it came to pass that Pharaoh the king of Egypt came to raise war at Karchemish Kar upon Euphrates, and Josiah went out against him. But the king of Egypt sent to him, saying, What have I to do with you, O king of Judea? I am not sent out from the Lord God against you, for my war is upon Euphrates, and now the Lord is with me, yes, the Lord is with me, hastening me forward. Depart from me, and be not against the Lord. However, Josiah didn't turn back to his chariot, but undertook to fight with him, not regarding the words of the prophet Jeremy spoken by the mouth of the Lord, but joined battle with him in the plain of Medigo, and the princes came down against King Josiah, and then, and then, excuse me, then said to, then said the king to his servants, carry me away out of the battle, for I am very weak. And immediately his servants carried him away out from the army. When he got upon his second chariot, and being brought back to Jerusalem, he died and was buried in the scepter of his fathers. And in all Jewry they mourned for Josiah. And Jeremy the prophet lamented for Josiah. And the chief men with the women made lamentation for him to this day. And this was given out for an ordinance to be done continually in all the nation of Israel. These things are written in the book of the histories of the kings of Judea, and every one of the acts that Josiah did, and his glory, and his understanding in the law of the Lord, and the things that he had done before, and the things now recited, are reported in the book of the kings of Israel and Judah. And the people took Jochaz, jo 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 the son of Josiah, and made him king instead of Josiah, his father, when he was twenty and three years old. And he reigned in Judah and in Jerusalem three months. And then the king of Egypt deposed him from reigning in Jerusalem. And he set a tax upon the people of a hundred talents of silver and one talent of gold. The king of Egypt also made King Jehoiakim, his brother king of Judea and Jerusalem, and Joachim bound the nobles, but Zacharias, his brother, he apprehended and brought him up out of Egypt. Five and twenty years old was Joachim when he began to reign in Judea and Jerusalem, and he did that which was evil in the, in the sight of the Lord. And against him Nebuchadnezzar, yep, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, came up and bound him with a chain of brass, and carried him to Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar also took of the holy vessels of the Lord, and carried them away, and set them up in his own temple at Babylon. But those things that are reported of him, of his uncleanness and impiety, are written in the chronicles of the kings. And Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead, for he was made king when he was eighteen years old. And he reigned three months and ten days in Jerusalem, and did that which was evil before the Lord, so that a year, so after a year, Nebuchadnezzar sent and caused him to be brought to Babylon with the holy vessels of the Lord, and made Zedekiah king of Judea and Jerusalem when he was one and twenty years old, and he reigned eleven years, and he also did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, and cared not for the words which were spoken by Jeremy the prophet, from the mouth of the Lord. And after King Nebuchadnezzar had made him to swear by the name of the Lord, he forswear himself and rebelled, and hardening his neck and his heart, he transgressed the laws of the Lord, the God of Israel. Moreover, the governors of the people and of the priests did many things wickedly, and passed all the pollutions of all nations, and defiled the temple of the Lord, which was sanctified in Jerusalem. And the God of their fathers sent by his messenger to call them back, because he had compassion on them and on his dwelling place. But they mocked his messengers. And in the day when the Lord spoke to them, they scoffed at his prophets. 
so far out that he, being angry with his people for, his, for their great ungodliness, commanded to bring up the kings of the Chaldeans against them, who killed their young men with the sword around their holy temple, and spared neither young man nor maid, nor man nor child, but he delivered all into their hands. And they took all the holy vessels of the Lord, both great and small, with the vessels of the ark of the Lord, and the king's treasures, and carried them away to Babylon. And they burned the house of the Lord, and break down the walls of Jerusalem, and burn the towers thereof with fire. And as for her, as for her glorious things, they never ceased until they had brought them all to nothing. And the people that were not slain with the sword he carried to Babylon. And they were servants to him and his children, until the Persians reigned, to fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremy, until the land has enjoyed her Sabbaths, the whole time of her desolation will she keep Sabbath to fulfill threescore and seven years. That's when they went into captivity in Babylon, and they were there for the seventy years, and that was their punishment for disobeying the Lord. And as always, I love you.